Good Monday morning, my friends. That is if you are listening when this episode airs. This week has given me several really important reminders about what is truly the cornerstone of effective and successful leadership. I wanted to pop in and share a little bit about that with you and give you some tips and full-on truth with a capital T. Before we get into it, though, I wanted to share a review left for the show. This review is from Anna, and she titles her review, Practically Empowering and Soul-Filling. Anna says, I just listened to a few episodes, and what a blessing this podcast is. I love how Tanya is passionate about grounding us in scripture and how she empowers us to be better leaders in all spheres of our lives through effective, practical strategies and tips. I appreciated especially her candid sharing of the tools she uses and how she manages her time using time-blocking methods in episode 19. Listen and be blessed by this podcast. Wow, thank you so very much, Anna. These reviews really help me understand what content is valuable, and they help other people find the show. So if any of you listeners haven't already, please, please pop over to Apple iTunes or Apple podcast and leave me a five-star rating and written review. And speaking of managing your time and using time blocking methods, don't forget to grab a more time strategy session with me where we talk about ways to create more time for the things that matter most to you. Just head over to gracefieldleader.com slash more time method to learn more. Okay, now Stay tuned for the meat of our discussion today. We are talking about trust, the cornerstone of effective leadership. Welcome to the Gracefield Leader Podcast. Do you want better work-life balance? Do you get stuck in patterns of perfectionism and people-pleasing? Have you always been an overachiever but never really feel good enough no matter how much outward success you achieve? Do you want more time for the things that matter most? Hi, I'm Tanya, a wife, mom, leader, certified Christian life coach, and Jesus lover. For most of my life, I tried to find worthiness through achievement. But no matter how hard I worked or how much I achieved, I never felt like I was enough. I was left burned out, empty, and exhausted. I had no time or energy for myself or my family. I needed balance. I needed peace. My life changed when I finally started to live like an unconditionally loved daughter of the King, saved by grace. This faith-led podcast will teach you time management, self-care routines, and practical leadership strategies to help you navigate life and leadership. If you're ready to become fueled by grace, and free from people pleasing? If you're ready to multiply your time and impact as a Christian woman in leadership, this podcast is for you. Unbutton your blazers and roll up your sleeves, sister friends. It's time to get after it. Building trust is hands down, 100% the cornerstone of effective leadership. In my opinion, before you can hope to accomplish any of the goals you have for your team or for your business, it is essential that you first prioritize building relationship and trust. Now, that's with the assumption that you actually want to be a leader and have people want to follow you as a leader. You have to prioritize and commit to building relationships which leads to building of respect and trust. Having fought the good fight myself and doing the hard work to try to do this and seeing the rewards over time and witnessing the experiences of other teams and leaders, I just know this to be true. Any good leadership development program will likely tell you the same. Now, some people might disagree with me, Some might take a completely different stance. 
but I do believe that I've had enough confirmation from the people that I lead or have led that affirms this truth. If you are new to leadership, people will give you a chance and they will give you the benefit of the doubt oftentimes for a while, but You will have to do the hard work of proving yourself and earning their trust and respect through consistency, transparency, humility, and authenticity. Being a leader is very different than being a boss. If your sole mission is to accomplish your own agenda and control your team and just be the boss of your department or business, I'm going to lay a bet that you are not going to have a very engaged team. And that's because you're trying to conduct a one-act play instead of building up and utilizing the gifts and talents of the entire team and truly respecting the gifts each individual team player brings. Sure, we all bring our flaws as human beings. We do as leaders and our team members do as frontline staff members. It's just reality. We need our team members to show us grace sometimes and accept our humanness. And we have to be willing to accept theirs. I'm finding that is very important to actually be willing to show humanness, to admit your mistakes. If you struggle with humility, if you have an intense need to be right, or appear as if you don't make mistakes? If you try to suggest that every decision you make is the right one, you are absolutely going to erode the trust and respect of your team members. I have witnessed this. And I know it's really hard to be a leader. And it's really difficult to show humility. But here's the truth. A good leader needs to be ready to eat some crow sometimes. There are plenty of times in my leadership journey where I have had to do that or I should have done that. And if I had, or when I did, it actually built trust and respect with my team members. They need to know that you make mistakes, that you don't have all the answers, but that you're willing to own them and you're committed to growing and learning what it means to lead them well. Your team is essential to your success. Your success is evident in their success. Sometimes we do our best to make decisions with thought and intention, using all of the information we have available to us. Well, Sometimes we find out that it still wasn't the best decision, and that's okay. Really, those can make for our best learning experiences. The kicker is, can you actually admit your mistakes and say, hey, this wasn't the best decision after giving it a try, and we need to make some adjustments and go a different way. When you do that, It is an exercise in relationship building with your team. But it's very difficult. It's difficult for me, and I feel like I'm someone that tries to show humility, and I very much understand the importance of showing humility. Still, it's always difficult to admit when you're wrong or admit when you've made a mistake. I've never had an experience in which I've done that and it's been thrown back in my face. It's always lent itself to strengthening me as a person and as a leader and strengthening the bonds amongst my team members. I'm going to tell you, if you don't know this or you haven't experienced it, and if you're having difficulties with your team, if you're having trouble getting them to engage in the way that you wish they would, I challenge you to stop and reflect on the degree to which you have spent time and energy building true, authentic, honest relationship with them. Showing humility, seeking their feedback and insight, and actually considering it as part of your decision-making process. 
acknowledging the value that that adds. And you can't just say the words. You have to do the actions that match the words. If you make mistakes, which you will, be honest about them. Own them. Show humility. That will help you build trust with your team. They're not going to see you as a terrible leader when you admit your faults. However, eventually, if you refuse to admit when you're wrong or you're dishonest about making mistakes or about the mistakes you've made, eventually, they will lose trust and respect for you as a leader. It's possible, but it is so much more difficult to earn back trust that is lost than it is to just start with the foundational building of trust in the first place. If there's any question in your mind as to whether you have opportunity to focus more on the people part of your leadership, the relationship building, the respect building, and the trust building, I urge you to put nearly every ounce of your energy into focusing on that. You know that you need your team to do the work that you need them to do. You know that they are essential to the success of your business, whatever it is, truly. And when I talk about relationship building, I'm not talking about being buddies with your team members. I'm talking about showing respect through consistent, and clear communication, supporting their needs, and showing them that you hear, see, and value them and their contribution to the team. Your business will suffer if you do not capitalize on the gifts and talents and strengths of your team. And if you don't show them that you're trustworthy and deserving of their respect, it might appear to be working out okay for a while, but you will eventually see an erosion in the culture and erosion in the engagement of your team. I know I'm being terribly redundant, but in a way it is for a purpose because it is so extremely essential to your success as a leader or if you hope to advance as a leader and actually feel and see that you make positive change in the lives of people, You have to get this concept. You have to resist the urge to control and be right. You have to be willing to own your mistakes and learn from them. If you don't, if you think you're hiding the truth and protecting yourself, people can smell that a mile away. Trust me, you are not hiding anything. I think most of you, if you're listening to this show, You already come at leadership with a heart of service and a true heart for people. But I think we always have opportunities to grow in our leadership, to grow in our communication, which is the cornerstone of building trust. If there's any kernel of this topic that hits home for you, number one, it's okay. We all find ourselves in difficult places. But be strong enough to see it. Have the awareness in yourself. Admit it and make a change. If you truly seek to build trust and respect with your team and make that almost 100% of your focus, you will be shocked at how much further you will be able to get in making progress with the other goals that you have for your business and for your team. But it has to start with your people first. It has to or you will be absolutely swimming against the current. So this isn't just for the benefit of your people. This is strategically important for you as a leader to get this concept. If you learn nothing else from what I'm saying, you must learn accept, learn and accept the fact that the foundation of leadership is trust. This episode is a little bit preachy, But I've had some recent experiences that reinforced and solidified that reality, and I just had to share it with you here. My hope is that it will preemptively keep you from experiencing the pain that comes from an erosion of trust within a team. The destruction that can come when you lead from a place that isn't one of humility and truth 
can be staggering. I've seen teams completely dismantled because of a lack of transparency, honesty, integrity, and trust. And the common denominator always comes down to communication. And it may all happen in the presence of having good intentions. Leaders that I've witnessed this happen to, it's not because they didn't have some good intentions or that they didn't have gifts and talents that they brought to their roles, but they struggled to communicate effectively and consistently with their team. They gave inconsistent messages, which resulted in building of mistrust. They didn't take ownership when they made mistakes. So even though they had the best intentions, it completely dismantled their teams. I've also seen the opposite scenario, where a leader comes in and their focus truly is on building relationship and trust with their teams. When they can effectively do that, they can set high expectations and high standards, and their team members team members will meet those expectations and exceed them because of the foundation of trust that that leader has built. So there is hope wherever you find yourself. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. This message about trust being foundational, it's not just my idea, and you shouldn't just take my word for it. Who is it that is our ultimate model of leadership? Jesus. And what does Jesus tell his disciples as they go out into the world to represent him? He instructs them to walk in integrity so that their words and intentions can be trusted. In Matthew 5, verse 37, he says, Let your yes be yes and no, no. In other words, when we keep our word and follow through with our intentions, we bring about trust in others. Jesus, in fact, calls us to trust him in all things. Now, how is it that we can do that if he hasn't proven himself trustworthy and if his word isn't complete truth? So, if he is to be our example for leadership, wouldn't you agree that trust is the cornerstone of great leadership? And that is what I have for you today. So, until next time, Go lead and live with integrity, humility, and grace. I pray this episode blessed you, spoke to you, or encouraged you in some way. If so, please share it with a friend and head on over to Apple Podcasts to leave me a review. That's the only way for me to know if you're enjoying the show. Nothing blesses me more than to hear from you. Also, come on over to our free Facebook community. This is a great place for us to support one another on our faith and leadership journeys. You can find the link to the group in the show notes or go to gracefilledleader.com forward slash community. If you have questions or content ideas for the show, please send me a message on SpeakPipe or via email. Go to gracefilledleader.com forward slash contact and leave a written or voice recorded message. I would love to know how I can best serve you on the podcast. Now to him who can do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Ephesians 3 verse 20. Until next time my friends, God bless.